our BBS this year is I Wonder. We're gonna have so much fun with tie dye, slime, and Kona ice. Join me at BBS. All of these dates are some of these dates. I hope to see you there. Greetings. My name is Reverend Janitha Rice Singleton, and today I want to pray a prayer of guidance for you and for me. Let us pray. Our oh, gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your son Jesus who died that we would have life and have it more abundantly. God, I come today praying for guidance that you will guide us on this life's journey. I pray for those that's seeking to understand the plan that you have for them. I pray that as they seek this plan, that they will turn to Jeremiah 29 and understand that you truly have a plan for us and we are to trust in you because your plan is much better than any plan that we could develop for ourselves. Lord, lift us up so that we will see you as the light, the light that leads to eternal life. Lord, there may be someone that's standing at a crossroad and they are trying to determine which path to take and they just don't understand what you will have them to do. I pray that you will whisper in their ears and let them know where they should go. That they will be guided by the scripture as they turn and maneuver this path of life. Lord, we lift up your children because it is difficult sometimes for us to truly understand what you want us to do. And so God, I pray that we will continually turn to your word and pray for understanding and wisdom and knowledge of your scriptures so that we will know where you will have us to go. God, direct us. Direct our lives, God, so that we will come to understand how you will have us to live together in harmony. God, we know you as a God that created the heavens and the earth. We know you as a God that positioned the stars exactly where they need to be. We know you as a God that knows every strand of hair on our head. And so God, if you did all of this and you know all of this, why shouldn't we trust you with our lives? And, and so I pray today that we will begin to trust you to guide us where we need to go. Guide your children. Lead us, oh God, into a clear understanding of the plan that you have for us. Oh, I thank you for loving us so graciously. And I pray, God, that as we continue on this journey, we will be guided by your light, your scripture. Thank you for this day. It is in your name that I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Take care. Good morning, my friends, and welcome to Douglasville First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Roger Best, and today is Pentecost Sunday, uh, May 28th. Welcome. Um, today I'll be reading uh, two passages and referencing several others. The first is 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and love and self-discipline. And then um, the 
original uh, Pentecost uh, passage found in the chapter of Acts, second chapter of Acts, uh, verses 1 through 21. Here, uh, now the word of our Lord. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they said, Are not all these speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phry Phrygia, sorry, and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belong belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, Ah, they're just filled with new wine. They're drunk. Well, Peter, stands, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, they are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves and servants, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, Pentecost Sunday, uh, the birth of the church, excuse me, um, and a glimpse at the character of the Holy Spirit. Um, every year I've, I've had churches where we uh, have a, a birthday cake and a Pentecost celebration because on this day, if you read on down uh, through the end of chapter 2, you'll find out that 3,000 were saved that day and added to the church. So this has been historically been the day where the church, uh, the birth of the, of the institutional church has begun. The Holy Spirit came and filled the room where the disciples were staying and um, he said like a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it looked like uh, uh, flames uh, sat upon each one. But the important thing to know is that it filled the room and all the disciples received that gift. Um, all of them received the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's important to note. Um, each talked about God's deeds of power. And so here, here's the interesting thing. They all received the gift. Um, they all talked about the same thing, uh, the things of God, God's deeds, although, you know, different deeds, but it was all similar, same topic. But each was given a different gift, gift, different language to speak. And so uh, this tells us a little bit about the Spirit and what it means for us. So we can look back at Pentecost, we can look back at the early church, and, and we see everyone got it. Um, it was all similar to what they talked about, um, but each one had it slightly different. Each one was had a different gift, um, and that's intentional. Um, we need to remember that. The promise is that each one of us, based on that, each one of us will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this is referenced throughout the, the New Testament. Um, there are times when uh, some people were, were baptized in the name of, of, of Jesus, name of the Father, uh, but had not received the Holy Spirit. And Paul talks about that. And yet this is something, this is one of the legacies. This is one of the gifts that the Father gives to us, those who believe. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
Um, and then he reference, Peter references uh, the prophet Joel, and he goes back and says, on the day of the Lord, you know, the Holy Spirit, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, um, everyone, uh, your, your men and women, your, your sons and daughters will, will prophesy, and, and young men will see visions, and old men will dream dreams, and even uh, the servants and slaves, even those uh, men and women both, all uh, will receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's important for us to think about. No one is excluded. Um, if we come and profess our faith in Christ, that is one of the gifts that we are given. The Holy Spirit is with you, my friends, and in you and works in you. Um, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7, talks about the Holy Spirit this way. He says, there are, talks about the spirits of the gift. Uh, the, the gifts of the Spirit, sorry. So there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. A variety of services, but the same Lord. A variety of activities, but it is the same God. And then this is important. This is the, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. That is why and what. You know, each one of us has the Holy Spirit, and it is to be used for the common good. It is to be used for the building up of the kingdom. It is to be used for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, it is not to be used for our own personal gain, although we may gain from its use. But the intention is that it is used for the common good, and we need to remember that. Um, so this is some hints and uh, some a listing of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit, things we need to remember Um and so in the story of Pentecost, we're reminded also of God's desire to save all. Um, he talks about this. He said, the Spirit will go on all. And he says, this is for your children and for those far away. Peter talks about this and talks about the desire. In, in John 3, 17, we hear these words, God did not send his son to condemn the world, but rather that the world might be saved through him. Um, and so it's important to note that here at the very beginning of the church, um, the desire for God, from God, is to save all, to bring all of his children home. Um, and so that is part of our call as followers of Christ. We are called to witness to uh, what God, to be a part. God chooses to allow us to be a part of his uh, proclamation of the good news of great joy. Um we see the importance of disciples witnessing to the power of God in their lives and its effectiveness in accomplishing God's purpose. Um, so the disciples received the Holy Spirit. They went out and spoke. Um, and, and here's the thing. You know, Peter was the one that actually gave the sermon, but it was all the other disciples that were speaking of the deeds of power that kind of um, tilled the soil. They got it ready. And so when Peter came and gave those words, 3,000 were ready to say, what must we do to be saved? Um, and so uh, we see how each one of us can witness to the power of God in our lives and see how effective it is in accomplishing God's purpose. Well, let me continue with this. In 2008, the United Methodist Church changed our membership vows. Um, it used to be we will support our church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. In 2008, they added witness, which I think is just, I think is a good, good, good decision. Um, it was added to highlight the mission and evangelistic responsibilities of being a United Methodist member, of being really a disciple of Christ. It reminds us of that, and it reminds us to live out our vows publicly. Um, our witness is more than simply, uh, you know, sharing how to become a Christian. It is uh, talking about the things of God. It is living our lives in such a way. It is treating people uh, with kindness and grace. It is showing people what it means to be a follower of Christ. Our witness, our trust you know, people, do they trust us? What we say, what we do makes an impact. It is kind of like the disciples there at the uh, Pentecost. It is tilling the soil, you know, uh, so that God can come in and share with them the, the saving message of faith in Christ. Uh, witness is a part of every Christian's faith. 
Um, but as, as scary as it is for many people, <laughs> and, and, you know, some people have the gift of evangelism, spiritual gift of evangelism. Most of us don't. And uh, we may be a little scared. We may be uh, frightened that we don't know what to say, or what if they reject us, or what if we, you know, cause a, a friend to, uh, you know, what if it messes up our relationship? Well, you know, hold on to this. Um, I'm here to remind you, we don't do this alone. God does not give us, and this is from Timothy, God does not give us a spirit of cowardice. All right, Opposite of cowardice is courage. We are given a spirit of courage, but rather we're given a spirit of love, of power, and of self-discipline. These are the things that God sends to us through his Holy Spirit. And so as we think about um, our witness, uh, know that the Holy Spirit is involved in that and will allow us to love the person allow us, give us the strength to carry on, and the discipline to know exactly, to prepare, uh, to get the words right, to read and, and study and, and talk with someone and listen and, and pour scripture into you so that you're ready when the time is available, when God opens up a door for you. Witness is how we live our lives. It's what we say. It's what we do. And it's why we do what we do. Um, you know, there's a lot of good people out there doing good things, um, but why they do it, you know, uh, maybe to feel good, maybe to curry favor for someone. But for us, we do these things because of the love of God, because of what God has poured into us, because of the blessings we have received from Christ. And so we do this, we share this with others because we want them to know what we know. Witness is caring enough about someone to point them to the good news of Jesus Christ. Think about the people you love. Think about the people um, that love you. And think about how you want the very best for them. And the very best thing we know is the love of Christ. Think about it, my friends. Have a blessed day.